The universe of digital prototyping tools is exploding. Each new player strives to differentiate themselves in a crowded arena. In this lesson, I'll present an organizing framework to make sense of the madness. It seems like every day there's a new prototyping tool coming on the market. Each one has to shout loudly to stand out among the rest. I'm visually programmed. I run native code. I've got spring physics. Total confusion ensues. Are these differences essential or just on the surface? As an alternative, I like to think of prototyping tools in four major buckets. These are visions, paths, sketches, and systems. These buckets organize products by the type of experience they enable and not by any particular feature set. As a result, it has longevity, even as particular tools will come and go. In general, tools on the left side of the spectrum are best applied to early explorations. They allow designers to move quickly and test many ideas. Tools on the right side, meanwhile, are better suited for later stage refinement. They allow designers to move with precision and get one thing exactly correct. One quick caveat. Whereas up till now, we've been talking about prototyping in general, including physical products, services, and experiences, we'll now focus on digital products specifically, software. All of the prior learnings still apply, but it's time to narrow in. Let's start with the first bucket, visions. Visions are prototypes that paint a picture of a future way of life. Visions spur the imagination. They convey how a hypothetical experience might feel once made reality. Prototypes in this category excel at exploring ideas, setting a vision, and communicating core value. Now in this category are time-tested basics like hand-drawn storyboards on the left, as well as other narrative media like video. These techniques both have the distinct strength of abstracting away details and focusing instead on use case and core value. In particular, film scenarios quickly capture the fundamental value of a concept, allowing designers to test its emotional resonance. Next up are paths. Paths are basically click-through prototypes. These are prototypes that guide users through an experience step by step. Compared to visions, paths present a more concrete reality. They support understanding how it feels to pass through an experience. And as such, they excel at testing task completion and basic flow. In general, designers build paths by exporting a large set of full screens and then drawing visual hyperlinks between them. If you click this button, transition to this screen, and so on. Paths are extremely quick to build. It's not uncommon we'll tweak designs until 15 minutes prior to testing and then quickly rig up a path-based prototype. This process also means that paths scale to highest fidelity visuals since you're exporting directly from your graphic design program. In this course, Envision will be our path builder of choice. Popular competitors include Flinto and Keynote. Flinto is great, especially in the interaction design arena, but it's focused very specifically on mobile prototyping, which makes it not well suited for our needs. Keynote is potentially more accessible since it's made by Apple and readily available, but has difficulty scaling to larger projects. Third, we have sketches. Sketches are prototypes that show users exactly how one part of an experience will feel. Just like Photoshop allows visual designers to converge upon pixel perfection, sketches allow interaction designers to converge upon nuanced interaction details. Sketches are quick to get started, support rapid experimentation, and leverage ideas familiar to interaction designers, such as states and transitions. At their best, these toolkits merge design and code into one single streamlined workflow. Now designers build sketches by taking static layouts and scripting behaviors on top of them. In general, it's programming languages that support this kind of behavioral creation. However, these programming languages are simpler than normal. They're specifically designed for this purpose, so they can be applied with great speed. In this course, Framer will be our sketch builder of choice. Popular competitors include Origami, Form, and Pixate. Origami and Form both employ visual or patch-based programming. This better captures the dynamic nature of data flowing through a system but can be foreign to newbies and difficult to scale. Pix8 works parametrically. This means that designers script behaviors using dropdowns and sliders. Now, this means it's extremely accessible to non-programmers, but again, it has difficulty scaling beyond a certain ceiling. And last, on the far extreme of our spectrum, are systems. Systems blur the lines between prototype and production. They are quickly created, fully functional applications. At their best, systems create rich interactive sandboxes that allow users to explore unconstrained. They are infinitely customizable, easy to integrate with outside services, and provide clients with robust technical proofs of concept. 
In the systems bucket, I include JavaScript frameworks like Angular, Ember, and Meteor. These are all alike in that they abstract away messy details, for example, security settings and backend logic, leaving designers to just focus on the good parts. Creative coding suites like processing and open frameworks also fit here. Now, as prototypers, our focus is on making things as real as possible, as quickly as possible. That means that in this course, our focus will be upon the middle of the spectrum, sketches and systems. On the left, visions fall short on our requirements for realness, while systems will fall short on speed. But don't worry, with a combination of paths and sketches, there's little we can't create. In this lesson, we've covered the full spectrum of prototyping tools, comprising visions, paths, sketches, and systems. Having defined our focus as paths and sketches, we're now ready to start making. Thanks for watching this O'Reilly training video. If you'd like more information on this topic, click on Learn More. Don't forget to subscribe to the O'Reilly Video Training YouTube channel for more tutorials. And be sure to like us on Facebook.